was, I was wondering if this microphone was beginning to work or not. It was an exciting bunch. Yeah! What's in the side? How many you out here yesterday for the opening day? Who's going to be playing upstairs? Who is uh, going to beat my high score in 2 k on the Atari Jaguar in the courtyard later? <laughs> the only and greatest reason to own a Jaguar. So my name is Chris Nellis, and I'm the guest curator for the Art of Video Game Exhibition here at the Smithsonian. Or a few more people to come in before we uh, start the floor here. And I just wanted to, you know, say a few things that, um, like with anything else, great in life, you don't do anything this large to think by yourself. So you can have an idea, you can have an interest, you can have something you care about that you want to bring to the world, but you have to find like-minded people, people who have a shared passion to see things happen. And, I can honestly tell you in the past three years of working with the entire staff here at the Smithsonian American Art Museum, it's been one of the greatest of my entire career. Um, the staff is absolutely wonderful. The, the way they've engaged this and embraced this, and quite honestly embraced in many ways a community and a genre of art that they had not ever experienced before. So I'd like to give you a round of applause to you. Uh, Kojima-san is one of the most widely respected game designers in the world, having been named as one of Newsweek's top 10 people of 2002, and receiving the Lifetime Achievement Award at both the 2008 MTV Game Awards and the 2009 Game Developers Conference. He is widely recognized as having created the stealth action genre video games with the highly successful Metal Gear game series, which profoundly changed the landscape of storytelling in video games. In addition to the beloved Metal Gear series, Kojima-san is also the creator and director of other highly respected series, including Snatcher, Police Knots, that um, in assembling this exhibition, I was taking into consideration with regard to video games, messages that can be delivered through them, and how they become art. So uh, I want to ask you first, have you had the opportunity to tour the exhibition? Hi, pre-open,時にさせていただきまして, え、ま、ゲームの長い歴史、え、ソフトとかハードを非常に分かりやすく 
展示されてまして、えー、中にはレアなハードがありまして非常に楽しみでした。So yes, during the opening ceremony two days ago, actually we had the pleasure of looking around the exhibition and、uh, we saw a lot of cool games. I think it does a really good job of explaining the history behind video games. A lot of interesting games there, as well as old hardware, which was really great to see and it brought back a lot of memories. あのまあ、こういう展示会っていうのは、まあ、世界中であるんですけども、やっぱりスミソニアン博物館で、今回のゲームが取り上げられたっていうのは非常に光栄ですし、えーまあ、この博物館、えー、科学とか技術とか産業とかアート、いろんな、まあ、自然史も含めて、いろんな博物館がある中で、えー、かなりそのゲームっていうのは改めて考えると、えー、その中にクロスしているというか、まあ、総合芸術に近いのかなということで。非常にこう改めてゲームの力強さというかゲームの,の中にまあ秘めた力というのを感じました。So of course you know I've had the honor of having my games、uh, displayed in exhibitions around the world, but to have it shown here in a place like the Smithsonian is truly an honor, and I think it's been a very important step. The Smithsonian is such a respected museum, and it encompasses so many different you know、uh, fields, including you know art, technology, and all these various museums. So having games be a part of that, recognized as a, a sort of art form. あとあの、えーまあ、子供の頃からですねあの航空宇宙博物館の方に、えー、ずっと来たくてですね今回まだ、えー、これから見ようと思いますけども、えーまあ、アポロが運んできた月の石とか、えー、着映画が初めて音速を超えた X1 とかですね、まあ、NRA の、えー、展示とかあるので、まあ、そこを楽しみにしております。And for a very long time,、uh, just the Smithsonian in general, I've been looking forward to looking at the National Air and Space Museum since I was a child. So <laughs> I'm really looking forward to going there after this is all done and、uh, taking a look at you know, some of the moon rocks brought back by Apollo,、uh, looking at the、uh, Enola Gay, Chuck Yeager's X1, things like that. So yeah, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. So we all have experiences of when we first saw a video game that. Was important. Can you、um, tell us a bit about your、uh, first experience with video games and what was the first game that you played? Eh, so this, I know, 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 So,、uh, you know, when I was a child, there really weren't very many video games, but I do have memories of Pong. Maybe it was Pong, but、uh, you know, it's a control home system in Japan, so maybe it wasn't the real Pong. It was just sort of a, a Japanese game that was similar to Pong. こんなに面白いものが世の中にあるのかというので、えー、近くのスーパーに最初ありまして、えー、そこで中学生の頃かな、えー、そこでちょっとやってました。But I think the game that really first pulled me in and I played a lot was probably Space Invaders. And I remember seeing it first on the news on TV and being very impressed by it, thinking, wow, you know, this, this kind of thing actually exists. And then it came to a supermarket near my house. And、uh, when I was a junior high school student, I went there and played a lot. <laughs> それ以前はですね、えーとまあ、デパートの屋上に家族で、えー、小さい時に、えー、買い物に行ってで僕とこの、まあ、兄弟だけ屋上でお金を渡されてですね屋上にこうビデオゲームじゃなくてメカトロのゲームがありましてそこでずっと遊んでましたそのベルトコンベヤの上に車が走っているやつとか影で、えー、戦闘機を落とすやつとかあとは射的ゲームですけども。そういったゲームの影響の方が僕は大きいですね。But、uh, you know, if we go back a little bit further, maybe even before video games, and I remember as a kid,、uh, when my parents would go shopping, there was a place, a department store, that on the top floor had a bunch of mechatronic arcade games, things like、uh, race cars that would run on a conveyor belt, or、uh, you know, these games where you shoot down、uh, ships, and it's kind of like a, a shadow play, right? You're shooting things down.、Um, And we used to go there a lot. My parents would just give me some money, and me and my, my brother would go there and play games while my parents shop. So you grew up playing these games.、Um, they had an impact on you. At what point did you decide that you wanted to make video games, and why? Specifically, 
were there any other forms of media that you wanted to develop in? Did you ever want to write stories, plays, movies? <笑>そう、まあ、映画監督というか映画を作りたかった時期がありまして、え、学生時代どうやったら映画を作れるかっていうことをずっと模索してたんですけども、長い間みたいにインターネットがあってデジタルをずっとなかったので、え、個人で映
これ強い気持ちがあると思うんですけどそれをゲームにしたらどうなるかっていうので作ったのが僕タイムになりますので、えー、物語とか世界観というよりも映画のようなシチュエーションをいかにゲームで表現するかっていうのが僕の特徴です。So, another example would be、uh, if you're watching a, a vampire movie, you know,、uh, and the main characters are fighting, and they have to hold off the vampires until dawn comes, right? There's that tension there, and you're wondering, wow, what are they going to make it? You know, you're waiting for the sun to rise. When the, fine sun, when, when the sun finally does rise, you feel very happy and relieved when that happens. You know, it's that type of experience that I wanted to simulate when I created both types. And so,、uh, that's basically how I approach my games is not so much to look at the story or world that's presented in a movie, but to recreate those situations and those experiences. であのまあ、反省反核のテーマなんですけども、えー、僕の両親がですね、えー、1930年生まれで、えーまあ、日本で空襲とかになってますし、えーまあ、戦争を体験しているので、えー、子どもの頃からそういう、えー、反戦の思想というかそういうのはずっとこう教育されてましたんで、えー、僕は戦争コンパクトゲームを作る時に、まあ、その、まあ、親からもらったものを、まあ、ゲームで、えー、表現したいっていうことで。And as for the anti nuclear messages that are found in my games,、um, this actually goes back to my parents because my, par my parents were born in the 1930s and you know, they experienced the air raids on Tokyo. So you know, I got a lot of influence from them and you know, I think inherited a lot of that anti war sentiment from them. And、uh, I, so when I went into the game industry and I started into my own games, I really want to carry over this message of you know, anti war, anti nuclear proliferation into my games. In your experience, what are some of the qualities that you believe are required to be a good game designer? First, I think you have to have a lot of different interests, be interested in a lot of many things, and be willing to jump in and try new things. あの例えば道を歩いてて,てですね道,だ道の間にの道の真ん中に人だかりができてる時に、えー、そこを絶対見に行く人じゃないとゲームデザインはまず無理です。So say if you're walking along the street and see a bunch of people in the middle of the street, you have to be the type of person who wants to go there and see what's going on. I think if you don't have that spirit of curiosity, then I don't think you become a good game designer. あとはそのやっぱり、えー、とテクノロジーに依存しますので最先端の技術をいつもこう、えー、勉強しているというか興味を持って、えー、見聞きしている人は、えー、大いいと思いますね。And of course, you know, since games run on technology, I think you have to have to a certain extent an interest in technology and the latest technological trends. あとはその映像とか文学とか音楽とか技術関係についても非常に興味があって、えー、日々、えー、勉強したり吸収をしている人っていうのが多いと思います。And I think from a creative aspect, you know, somebody who's interested in the latest visual trends, stories, music, and other artistic type of topics、uh, is probably well suited to becoming a game designer. ええっとまあそういう下地があって一番重要なのはその僕はそのゲームっていうのはサービス業だと思ってますのでサービス精神が旺盛な人、特に日本でいうとおもてなしの精神というのがありまして、人をいかに喜ばすかとか、こう人のまあ気遣い。気遣いがあって、それを武器にいかに喜ばせてサービスをするかっていうそういうのにこう喜びを感じる人だと思います、ね。But I think above all that, what's really important is what we call in Japan the spirit of omotenashi, which is kind of like a spirit of hospitality or the the will spirit of wanting to give something to someone, share an experience with someone. So I think it's that spirit of hospitality, wanting to share an experience and give an experience to someone else that's very important. And to think about how you can make other people have fun and you want to sacrifice yourself to make that fun apparent to other people. Well, technology to art no high key of what he joined in Osea's Kino Sto, the other game design at the top of us. So I think somebody who's very interested in all this technology and willing to sacrifice themselves to make other people happy, I think those are the people who are well suited to becoming game designer. Okay. We're talking about、uh, you know, the games that you've worked on. But I want you, to, if you could, to name a game、uh, other than one you developed that has had a profound impact on you and why. First, I was interested in the game of Super Mario Bros. 
Well, first of all, I just have to say that probably the most influential game on me was Super Mario Brothers. I think if that game did not exist, I probably would not be sitting here today. But there is also a game that after I entered the gaming industry, something that stood out to me and really impressed me. And that game would be a game called Another World, which I believe is called Out of This World here in North America. And it was a polygon based game released way back when, and uh, that, that really impressed me a lot. Is there anyone in the audience who's played it? え、思想がその作家性というか作り手の作家性が出てまして、え、アートに関してもそこの物語にしての so I think what it did is it really did a great job of conveying the creator's style, his will, and his artistic sense and that aesthetic value um, through all parts of the game, you know, from the aesthetics to even just, you know, the type of gimmicks and puzzles that were in the game. And I think he did a great job of conveying that message to the player and that really influenced me a lot, it made me want to create a game that was similar to that. <coughs> Some artists struggle having to balance the commercial interests with their creative desires. Um, how do you maintain this balance and make sure your games are yours instead of you know, wanting to come out uh, from a business objective? <laughs> Well, honestly, you know, there are only 24 hours in a day, and if I could, I would love to use all those 24 hours as creative time creating a game. あの、なんですけども、やっぱりその but I think in order to create something great, something truly great, you have to create the environment that allows it to, do, to create freely. And uh, to, in order to accomplish that, I decided that I had to become a producer, and that becoming a producer would allow me to create the games that I want to create. MGS1 was not a producer before, so so, you know, prior to MGS1, you know, I wasn't a producer, so I was very bound by, you know, dates and budgets, you know, I had no control over hiring people, I couldn't control the budget, uh, a lot of times I didn't really know where the, the deadlines came from, so, you know, I, I really didn't have that power to do what I wanted to do. So I think there may be a lot of people here in the audience who maybe want to produce a creative type of uh, you know, occupation, whether it's games or something else. And I think if you have a great supportive producer there who can encourage you and bring that creative creativity out of you, that's great. But if there isn't a person like that, then I think really it's up to you to really take the leadership, go out there and become a producer yourself. え、so, but then of course, you know, in order to become a producer and maintain your position as a producer, you have to know business. You have to look at the business aspects, keep multiple lines of things running at once, 
you have to be very organized, you know, keep track of the budgets and whatnot. So I think it's very important to have that skill. But you know, what I want to emphasize though is that that role as a producer, you know, that's only to facilitate creativity. So creativity and creation is always priority number one. And I become a producer to support that creative endeavor in order to, to support my role as producer. I have to study business, but priority is always on creation. In 2006, um, you liken your role as a game designer to someone who runs a museum. <laughs> <laughs> your game, acting as that museum, contains the art that you create, lighting, the placement of objects, um, but the video game itself is not art as art should radiate the designer. Um, I believe that video games are an art form due to the three voices that are present um, when games become art through the author, the game mechanics, and the player themselves. Do you still share the same position that you did in 2006? <laughs> you know, honestly, I don't remember uh, exactly what I said in 2006. <laughs> あの、so, you know, I can't come here to the Smithsonian and just come around and say, oh, hey, it's not art. Uh, but, uh, I will say that, you know, here at the Smithsonian, it's, it's a very large museum. You know, there's, there are many museums, you know, dedicated to technology, artistic endeavors, uh, you know, music, and a lot of different things. So from that perspective, I think games really do have a place. And it's kind of a collaborative art or a synthesis of all these various aspects into a whole. And that in itself can be perceived as art.サッカーが例えばバナナをリンゴと生きてもそれでいいわけです。え、バナナに見えるんですけどサッカーはあ、あのリンゴだと生きることも100% サッカーせなんで、これはアートであるんですけども、ゲームっていうのはそのインタラクティブなんで、え、車のハンドルがまあ丸なんですけども、え、それを三角にすると運転できないっていうことと同じように、え、100% contradiction that I would like to point out, or one contrasting point, is that, you know, in traditional art, um, painters can, say, do a portrait and basically push their views on the viewer, right? Like, say, if he painted something that looked like a banana, but said, hey, no, this is an apple. Or really, you know, as the viewer, you have no control over that. The, the painter has total control over what they're showing to the, to the viewer. And that's, I think, what art has been at this point. Um, but for games, you can't really do that, because it's interactive, right? And so, so if you take the example of a car, you know, people are used to driving a car with a round steering wheel, but if you were to suddenly change that to a triangular steering wheel, I think people would have a really hard time driving. So I think, you know, as someone who's creating a game, you have to keep that interactivity in mind, and you can't completely push your vision on the player. So I think, you know, the basis of game design and our goal is to take all these various arts, whether it be, uh, you know, the, you know, visual arts or music or technology, and as a game designer, I think it's my job to kind of take all these various arts, combine it into a whole, and present that to the player as a service. So and then you know then there's the last step as well where once the player gets involved and they also become a part of that interactive process and they become a part of that art. So I guess you know from a certain perspective, yes, I guess you could say it is art, um, but it's not traditional art in the traditional sense. Um, it's a sort of interactive art. If you had to pick one greatest hope for the future of video games, will video games continue to be a significant role culturally in society? 
、えー、っとですね、あのまあ、インタラクティブなエンターテインメントというのはですね、まあ、今後、どんな、まあ、未来が待っているか分かりませんけど、えー、おそらく、えー、未来永劫にインタラクティブなエンターテインメントというのは存在すると思います。あの人間が必要とする限り。You know, of course, I don't know what the future holds, but I, I believe that interactive entertainment will not go away. I think you know, people will there always be that need for that type of entertainment. And of course, you know, technology is always evolving. So I think as long as technology keeps on evolving, interactive entertainment will also evolve with the technology and become something better at every step of the way. And then in addition to that, you know, that、uh, evolutionary step of technology, I believe that it will also become much wider in society. You know, it will impact a lot more areas of society. So we'll use it in things like maybe medical science or、uh, various other parts of our daily lives. And I think so, you know, games will become much more important, not just among the community, but across a much wider audience. その the game, 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 をがまあ実験台となってその結果教育とか医療とかサービス業にどんどんどんどん広がっていくというふうに思ってますので、えー、非常に未来は明るいというか、えー、思いますね。And so I guess you could say that you know games could kind of serve as testing ground for a lot of technologies that could later on become very useful in medical fields of medical science or education or other critical social services. So I think,、uh, really, from that perspective, games are a very important part of our future, and I think the future is very bright. 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 And、uh, as an example of that, you know, there's the Kinect, which I think probably many of you may have in your own homes.、Um, and you know, it's first introduced as a part of a game experience. But I think maybe in five to ten years, we'll be using that type of interaction with a lot of other things besides games. So, in a certain way, games are kind of like at the cutting edge of technology and introducing people to these new technologies that will be a part of our daily lives in the future. Those are all of my questions. So, I thank you. So, before we.、Uh, Uh, before we came here, we opened up to the Metal Gear community, to fans of Kojima san, the opportunity to submit questions.、Uh, so we have selected some questions that I will be reading here, and、uh, Kojima san will be answering for us. So the first question comes from Joseph Lynch, and he says A lot of your games are influenced by your love of film, such as Blade Runner, Akira, The Thing, Terminator.、Um, Full Metal Jacket, The Great Escape, there's a theme,、um, among several others.、Uh, and generations of children、uh, grow, have grown up playing your games and they enjoy your stories. How does it make you feel knowing that your games are now inspiring、uh, you know, future filmmakers and game designers? インスパイアされて受けながら育ってきたんですけどもそういう映画とか漫画とか小説で吸収した僕が出力したもののゲームなんですけどもそのゲームを今の皆さんが吸収していただいてまたそれを違う別のエンターテインメントのメディアで出力されるっていう非常にこう、えー、光栄ですしなんか運命的なものを感じます。So, you know, when I was young, And then I kind of took all this input, processed, processed it within myself, and the result of that was a game which I output. So to hear now that the games that I've created are influencing other creators、um, in other fields,、uh, I think is, is very exciting and, and it's an honor. And it, in a way, I, I think it's kind of come full circle. And I feel like, to a certain extent, it's kind of like,、uh, I don't know if you can say destiny is a little bit too much, but you know, it feels like something very special to me. 
あのまあ、僕、26年前にゲームのこの業界に入ったんですけども、えー、その頃はですね、えー、ゲームは喋らず、えー、ビープ音で、えー、16色ぐらいですね。So, you know, I entered this industry about 26 years ago now, and when I first entered, you know, of course,、uh, games were very simple. It was like 16 colors and sounds, just these simple beeps. But you know, I quit my, my goal of becoming a movie director and entered the game industry based on this very, very simplistic game at the time. And you know, I've always been hoping, looking forward to the day when games can mature and become this expressive art form, this expressive medium that can actually compete with movies on that level. And、uh, to be quite honest, I never expected to come to this point so quickly.、Um, but you know, I'm very happy that it finally has come to this day and because it's something that you know, I've been looking forward to and it's the reason why I entered the industry in the first place. This next question is from Michael O'Hara. So, all of your games are a cinematic experience. Would you ever consider directing, writing an actual movie of your own? Or do you feel that to achieve a truly realized story, such as Metal Gear Solid Games, it is best done through video games? I don't know. 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 豪華点が出せるようなゲームが作れたら映画も撮ってみたいと思います。You know, honestly, I'm I'm a movie fan, so you know it's very special to me, and I honestly would love to make a movie someday.、Um, but you know, that said, you know, I think it has to be a certain special game that has to provide that right setting. So someday, maybe. なんですけどあのメタルギアソリッドっていうゲームは僕の中ではゲームでしかないです。ゲームで最適な世界観、ストーリー、キャラクターとかを。作りましたんで、えー、僕はまず映画を作るんであれば、映画に最適なストーリーとか世界観とかキャラクターを作ると思いますので、ミタルギアソリッドとはかなり違うようなものになると思います。But I don't think that game would be Metal Gear Solid, and the reason why is that Metal Gear, Sto- Metal Gear Solid was developed specifically to be a comic game. You know, it has a specific role in the story that's well suited and optimized for a game. And in my mind, Metal Gear Solid is a game and nothing else. So I think if I were to create something that would become a movie, I'd have to come up with a new type of story, new characters, something that's better suited to the medium of movies. Well, you know, I'm going to talk about the live action and the live action. I'm going to talk about 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 the live action. And、uh, you know, I'm sure maybe a lot of people here actually were hoping to hear that I would say, yes, I'm going to make a Miller Solid movie. <laughs>、uh, but you know, even if that were to happen, I just want to make it clear that I think if it were to be made to a movie, it would have to be something completely new.、Uh, and I wouldn't use my current scripts. I think I'd have to get somebody to write a new script, get somebody else to direct it、um, as a movie. I know, well, the movie is a very good thing. I know, well, the movie is a very good thing. 近々というか、えー、いずれ発表できると思いますので、えー、まああまり言えないですね。はい、あの期待して待っててください。And I know this is a question I get asked a lot.、Uh, you know, are you gonna make a movie? And、uh, this is always something in the back of my mind, so I'm always thinking about it. And、uh, I can't really say too much right now, but you know, I'm working on something, and I hope in the near future I'll have something to announce. So, this、uh, next question comes from Burke Eisel. If you could say that you identify most with any of the characters in the Metal Gear Solid series, <laughs> which character would it be and why? <laughs> and Snake is sitting right here. Right? <laughs> <laughs> You know, honestly, I, when I've asked, asked this question, I think I answer it differently every time.、Uh, I, I got asked this yesterday, and I think I answered Otacon. <laughs> But since we have Snake here today,、um, I'll say Snake. The reason is that, 
、えーとまあ、今年でメタルギア25周年なんですけども最初のスネークっていうのは喋れないハードだったので無口ですほとんど喋りませんで MGS1 で、えー、喋るようになったので結構喋りました、えー、寡黙だった男が喋りました And、uh, so I'll explain some of the reasons why, but just to give you some history, you know, when Snake was first introduced as part of the original Metal Gear, you know, he didn't speak at all. You know, it was, it was a game where characters had no voices, he was just a very silent character.、Um, but now that you know, we have sound in games, you know, he's kind of become this very talkative kind of character. Metal Gear Solid 2 and 3 was a very talkative character. Then, you know, the next step, of course, was when we went from PlayStation 1 to PlayStation 2. Not only could he speak, but now he could do facial expressions and express emotion. And so that became the next step in his evolution. Evolution of the character becoming deeper at every step of evolution、um, something that's very unique to games. And I think you know, he's a character that's very well suited to games, a very unique to this medium. And、uh, I can't really say what will happen to Snake next after this point, but you know, I think it would be great if we went full circle and had a Snake that really didn't talk again. <laughs> So, this,、uh, this next question comes from Stuart Price. So, how do you think video games enable richer storytelling? And what are the key aspects you feel are important to a gameplay driven narrative? まだまだ非常にまだ難しいと思います。First of all, I want to say that introducing story into an action game is a very difficult task, and I think it's something that a lot of game creators struggle with. It's not easy to take a story and put that into an action setting where the players are able to interact with that action. And I think a lot of game creators still struggle with that balance. ただあのそうはいえですね、映画とか小説とは違ってインタラクティブなんで、主人公を自分が操作して自分が行動を決定している以上。But that said, I think even if it's difficult, you know, the payoff is much greater because unlike movies or novels where you're just looking on as, as an observer, with games you're interacting with the characters, so that level of immersion is completely different. And I think you know, you're able to express things that you can't express in other mediums. えー、感情的なものも感じることができるので、えー、そこはやっぱり使わないと、えー、ゲームの力っていうのはそこに、えー、威力を発揮できると思うのでそこはまあこれからも、えー、注目していきたいと思います。So I think you know it's very important since players are experiencing that you know the events in the game for themselves they establish a connection to the character they they feel like they're experiencing these events in the game for themselves and it creates much more emotion in the player. I think that's a very important aspect of games. It's something that you know, I feel very strongly about, and I still want to keep on preserving. I still want to keep that narrative aspect in my games moving forward. まあ、アクションで言うとそのプレイヤーの自由度って重要なんですけども、プレイヤーと自分が乖離すると、そこで切り離されてしまいますので、自分がその世界の中で全ての行動を決定しているっていうのを常に思わせながら。ストーリーを進めていければ、えー、他のメディアにもはるか、あのはるかにですね、こう、えー、すごいことができる、えー、まあそのメディアだと思っていますので、えー、そういうことを踏まえて今新しいゲームを作っています。And so you know that said, I do think though that you know freedom, allowing the player freedom is very important. 
And I think what's the key is to really achieve, achieve some kind of balance where the player has the illusion of freedom, and it feels like they're making all these choices for themselves, but then you're still telling a story within that context. And so that's something that I'm really aiming for with my next game, and I hope that I'm able to achieve that. え、こちらと思いますけど、え、今後作るものに出したらなるべくそういうのがなくて、自由に自分で行動しながらもストーリーを自由に自分の中で処理していくようなそういう実験を今しております。And so I think, you know, I kind of have a reputation for having these really long cutscenes. <laughs> but uh, I just want to say that moving forward I'm experimenting with new ways of telling a story and you know with my next game I think maybe you can expect a few a little less on of the cutscenes. Uh, but that said, there still will be a narrative and an experiment with a way of telling a story in a way that's free. So you'll still be able to experience that story but you'll do it you'll control the pacing and it'll be free. That's what I'm experimenting with right now for my next project. This next question is from Eli Freeberg and Friends. <laughs> Since I'm going to condense this a little, I'll make it a little shorter. Um, so the Metal Gear series often has so many references to American pop culture, history, and politics. The newest games were focused on nuclear weapons, then genetics and cloning, um, and most recently the concept of information technology taking over the world. Historical references such as Cuban Missile Crisis and the Iran Contra scandal, pop culture references such as Rambo, Blade Runner, Lethal Weapon. What is it that fascinates you about Western history and politics, and where did it begin? えっとですね、僕の子供の時はですね、ほとんどそのテレビをつけるとアメリカのドラマ、アメリカの料理番組とかバラエティショーはテレビでやってましたんで、非常にこう日本に住みながら海外の文化をそのままあの吸収してます。well, you know, I had, honestly, when I was a child, you know, I was raised under the influence of Western culture. Because whenever you turn on the TV, there'd be some kind of, you know, American TV show or Western drama, or maybe a cooking show or a variety show. You know, so even though I was living in Japan, you know, I was constantly exposed to Western culture. なんでその、ま、日本の文化も吸収はしてましたけども、え、半分以上はその日本じゃない国の世界中の、え、音楽とか小説とか映画とか見たりとか含めて。え、それを普段から吸収してましたんで、え、普通にこう自然に出てくるものがそれがこうミックスされたえ、ちょっと無国籍な感じのものになっているのではないかと思います。And so, you know, of course I was also influenced by Japanese culture, but I'd say that more than half of the influences that I got were from outside of Japan. And uh, you know things like uh, movies or music. You know these things I got from outside Japan and kind of got processed within my mind. And uh, I think you know because of that, you know my my sense is not so much as someone who's Japanese, but it's maybe a little more international, something that doesn't belong to any particular nationality. あの、僕が作るゲームっていうのはその日本を舞台にしてませんけども、え、やっぱりそのアメリカとかを舞台にするということはですね、非常にスケール感が出ますので、え、そういう意味で。え、あの、舞台を選定したりしてます。あの、スケールのでかい話とか、スケールのでかいゲームを作りたいので、え、そのアメリカを舞台に書くとかをえ、テーマにしています。As far as why I set my games in America or other countries, you know, really the reason for that is I want to tell a grand story, something really big, and I think if I set it in a small country like Japan, that'd be hard to do. So, because I want to tell this really epic story, you know, I didn't want to limit myself to a certain setting, so that's why I, I looked abroad and looked at things like America and so I could tell this really grand epic story. あの、ま、アメリカの定番の影響とか映画の影響非常に大きくてですね、子供の頃になんて、なんかだと職業、ま、宇宙飛行とかあるんですけども、え、3番目がLAPDの殺人化の警部と。そう、you so, know, uh, you know, as a child, I was influenced by all these various uh, TV shows, and uh, you know, I think, and uh, you know, all these various TV shows. So you know, there are three things I think that really influenced me. You know, there's like uh, detective shows, uh, sci-fi shows, and uh, I think all those things really had a great fun back on. So uh, there was a detective murder mystery. I think that was very. 
very influential on me. Uh, he wanted to actually become a part of the murder investigation units in the LAPD when he was a kid. <laughs> so, you know, if you look at most Japanese kids, I think, you know, they want to become a Japanese police officer, but for me, I want to become a part of the, you know, American Highway Patrol, and, uh, become a part of CHIPS, so yeah, that's <laughs> Next question is from Nin Cho, and this will be our last question. What? <laughs> what has been your shining moment of accomplishment in 25 years of Metal Gear? Small question. <laughs> Big answer. <laughs> it's, it's hard to answer that question, you know, judging by myself, like what's a shining moment? <laughs> あの、やっぱりですね、えっと、プレイステーションのメタルギアソリッド 1 so, you know, in the early days, you know, I did have some very hardcore fans, but Metal Gear kind of existed in the shadows, and I was a game creator who worked mostly on, you know, these lesser-known hardware platforms, you know, personal computers. So it wasn't really a huge international hit. Metal Gear Solid 1 was released in the world, and it was released in America, Europe, and Asia. It was a hit for the world. 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 え、そこから大きく変わりました。あの、え、紀元前、紀元後みたいな感じで。え、それ以前とは全然生活というそのまりの僕を見る感じが変わりました。I, th I think it's really the start of a new era for me in my life. Um, I, can, I can say it's like you know looking at you know BC versus AD in my life. There's that much of a transition for me. あの、ま、ジェームスキャメロンのターミネーター公開して、次の日にもう生活変わったみたいな。え、インディ、日本のインディーズの監督だった僕が突然ハリウッド映画デビューしたみたいな、そんな感じでした、僕は。so it's like, you know, James Cameron comes out with the Terminator and next, you know, the next day he's this big Hollywood guy, you know. So I think for me it was like that, you know, it's like I went from being an Indies Japanese movie creator to suddenly becoming this guy who's in the limelight, you know, in, in the Hollywood big leagues. So it's really an honor. ちょっとこの詳しく言いませんけど、え、25周年があって今自分が作ってるもので一番輝きたいと。え、思ってます。あの、来年50歳なので、40代の間に、え、一番自分の中でも満足いくようなもうその光を放つようなものを作りたいな
I'd like to say that it has been an honor to have you here to be part of this exhibition that has taken you know, three years of, of work and love on behalf of the people putting it together, one that I've been waiting my whole life for. And so I would like to present to you as well with um, a copy of the book that represents the exhibition and your amazing contribution to us and to the world. So I thank you so much. Metal Gear's in there. <laughs> Page 140. He's looking for it. Start moving, 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 start moving